Okay, today I'm going to restore uh, and get working a radi RCA Radiola 18. Um, these were consumer radios uh, built, my understanding is 20, 1927 through 29. Um, they have a really nice top, you can just open it up like a car hood. And then here's the tube lineup, it's a TRF design. Um, I guess three gangs on the variable capacitor, so this is these go to three resonance circuits here. And amplify, 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 and detect, amplify some more. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look at this thing, see if we can get going today. Okay, here's the back side of the radiola. Um, you can see the tube deck. This is a TRF design, so the resonant coils are underneath it. The uh, four gang capacitors on top. Uh, this is the power supply and I presumably the audio output transformer. There's the power supply our connections. And uh, power switch over there. So, this thing is, uh, you know, it's not terrible. I think it's uh, serviceable. This is the, appears to be what's left of the power cord. So what we'll do is uh, we'll give it an assessment and uh, see what's going on here. Okay, so I found the um, a uh, description and the schematic on uh, Nostalgia Air. Really great circuit description of this thing. And uh, I went ahead and started pulling the tubes out. They're all there, and they're in the right sockets, uh, which sometimes doesn't happen with these old radios. But everything's really clean. The sockets are actually very tight as well, which is a good sign. Um, next step is I'll pull the uh, chassis and... Uh, test the uh, transformers, make sure um, they're all in good shape. And if they are, then we can proceed with uh, checking um, the few resistors that are in here for opens, because sometimes the power supply resistors um, open in these guys. They get hot over time and break open their wire wound devices. So we'll check those, and um, then we can replace the coupling caps and power supply caps. Okay, so I've done a quick um, wipe down of the dust in the chassis and cleaned it up a little bit. And now we're going to check the uh, RF uh, coils and the audio uh, transformers and whatnot. Okay, so I went through and I checked all the, the uh, RF coils and they're all good, which is a huge relief. Um, there is a little damage. I can't focus on that. There we go. On this one. Uh, obviously someone's been here here before, but it's uh, it's working, it's conducting, um, and I don't see any major problems with uh, the insulation there, looking carefully at it. Uh, the next step will be to check the audio coupling transformers. Interesting to note that these are little, um, those are capacitors, these metal strip things. So there are quite a few. There's one, two, three, four. There are some over here. These are um, high Q resonant capacitors. I don't know, maybe mica, perhaps, um, because they're on these these coils on the uh, um, sorry the RF transformers. So it's kind of interesting to note um, and look at them. All right, cool. Move on to the next step, which is checking the audio uh, coupling transformer. Uh, there's actually two of those, so see how they work. Okay, so I've uh, checked the uh, audio coil output transformers, which are here. They're fine, um, too. And I've also checked these uh, dog bone resistors, and they actually measure reasonably close to the schematic, so I'm going to leave them as is. Um, these guys are definitely Pico Fared uh, range, uh, high Q RF caps. These long things here and here, you know. Let's see, give our view. You know, like uh, this right there, and that one, and um, this one over here. There's one back in there. Yeah, those are. I'm gonna leave those as is. The ones I'm concerned about. There are four uh, half uh, microfarad. Um, RF decoupling caps in this box. Um, 
This is the ground terminal for those, and then here are the four terminals. One, two, three, four. Um, these guys, uh, one of them is appears to be leaky with just uh, simply an ohmmeter test, so uh, I think these ones have to be replaced. So i got to figure out what I want to do about this, because the problem is that the it's not easy getting into this box. As you can see, they, there are metal steel tabs bent over. They hold this to the chassis, it's not bolted down. You know, you could theoretically remove the tuning capacitor, but I don't want to mess with that if I don't have to. Um, so I think, uh, let's take a look at it. Maybe if I just bend some of these tabs out on the top, maybe I can get in there somehow, some way. Uh, or possibly just build a terminal strip off this thing, just unhook everything and move it, migrate the parts over to a different area of the radio. Uh, there's certainly more than enough space in here for that. So we'll have a, we'll think about it a little bit and see what can be done. Okay, I got good news. So if you bend the tabs, this, you can actually slide this right off and reveals the stack of uh, half microfarad caps. Um, this is terrific because these these will be easy to remove. I'll just remove them from this side and then tack on a replacement half uh, microfarad cap, high voltage caps um, on the other side. And uh, should be good to go on this piece, and then I can rebend the tabs back uh, because it's made with that uh, high quality American steel back in the day, so should have no problem getting this back together. So, good news. Uh, just be super careful when you're remove bending these tabs back because it's pretty easy for the screwdriver to fall onto this coil here, and you don't want to have to rewind this thing. I've rewound these things before, and it's uh, it's not exactly fun. All right, so we'll keep going. Okay, so that was really easy. Um, these caps just come right off. You just kind of pry them a little bit and then break the uh, the foil connections off. Um, I'm sure 100 years from now, uh, people will be swearing because we're ripping out these, you know, amazing uh, paraffin wax capacitors out of these old radios and throwing them in the trash. <laughs> but it is what it is. We're gonna make this thing go again. And uh, these caps were really well built. I mean, man, look at this thing. Wow. So, anyway, uh, we'll update these with about uh, half microfarad caps and uh, put the, can, the top of the can back on. If you leave a little bit of the extra copper strap there, it gives you something to tie onto. Also interesting to note, these caps have date codes on them of 1928. So, uh... I guess that's when this radio was made. Good to know. All right, check it out. So now um, I replaced the uh, the taper caps from 1928. These guys with these. So this is really an interesting comparison. So two of these things are equivalent to four of those. Um, so that's pretty neat. Significantly smaller parts these days. So anyway, uh, those guys are in, and we're going to repackage this, and we'll be done with uh, this side of the chassis. I think the only thing left is a little deoxid on the two pins. Some of them, most of them are pretty good, actually. A couple of them have a little corrosion. Uh, check the rheostat, see if it's okay, because I've read that sometimes these go bad. And then uh, this part of the radio will be done, then we'll tackle the power supply next. So quick note how I'm mounting these. Uh, I used a hot melt glue gun with a special hot melt glue for metal to glue these guys, to glue this little piece of insulator back inside this case before I button it up. So hopefully that'll stabilize it over the years. And it seems to be in there pretty good. Okay, so uh, here's the uh, little capacitor bank glued up with the uh, hot melt glue. It's uh, in there quite well now. I then check the, uh, the potentiometer which literally the antenna goes, <laughs> ties right to this, and this guy goes to the grid of the first two over here. That's an interesting architecture, <laughs> to say the least. Anyway, this is fine, uh, no problems whatsoever with this potentiometer. Uh, I also sprayed a little deoxid in here and in all the two pins as well while I'm under here. So I think that's it for the um, bottom of the radio itself. Um, 
the next step is going to be to uh, take a look at the power supply. Okay, here's the uh, power supply. I removed it and I cleaned it out. And uh, it's pretty sweet because there's a switch here allowing you to select between 110 and 120 volts uh, AC, which is really great for using on modern uh, power lines. So who would have thought that uh, they thought of this back in 1928? So the next step is going to be take a look at this thing. I guess um, inside these boxes, one of them is a power transformer. I'm not sure what order. I'll have to look at the schematic, but one's a power transformer, one is a Two of them have inductors in them, and I guess one that has inductors in it also has some capacitors. So, um, we'll have to figure that out because opening <laughs> opening these things is not going to be any fun. They're, they're pretty tight. So, we'll have a look. Okay, here's the bottom of the power supply. And if you look at the... I may not be able to see the schematic, but oh, there it is. Um, this one here that's potted with these uh, capacitors, we can actually access the inductors independently. So I think what I'll do is I'll leave this alone. I'm not going to open these things up. I'll leave these alone and just uh, put the capacitors uh, underneath the chassis. Um, so that, because uh, you really don't want to open this thing up. I mean, that, man, that thing, that, uh, this, is very potted. I mean, it's just that's going to be um, difficult at best to to take apart. And I think that we can do that with avoiding. I don't think we have got to deal with that. So we'll just rewire the caps on the bottom and unhook them and re use the coil that's in here. Use the inductor that's in here, um, and it'll be fine because those caps will, whether or not they're leaky, doesn't matter because they will not be tied to any other uh, nodes within the circuit. Um, another interesting thing to note is the um, these power resistors here. Um, so the uh, recommendation from Nostalgic Air, which is a good one, is to check the impedance across these, make sure that they are as expected. This actually looks like there's a repair right there. Someone must have repaired this at some point. Because my understanding is these wires pop open after time. So um, I'll check on all these things and see if any of them are open. If they are, I'll replace them with a... The recommendation is a 2 watt resistor. I have plenty of those, so we'll just tack it right across the terminals, just like this repair from the uh, probably the 1930s. Very interesting stuff. Okay, so these resistors turned out to be just fine. I had to unsolder the transformer taps right here, here, and here to check them, but they're okay. Unfortunately, these two sections were bad, and obviously back in the day this one was bad too. So I had to replace these resistors. Uh, so next we'll, uh, we'll replace the caps, or rather wire past them, um, on this potted piece right here, and then uh, we'll be ready to try the radio. Okay, so I, um, I replaced these caps. I found out that the inductor is actually wired across here and here. There's a typo on the, the Nostalgia Air page, uh, at least with respect to this um, radio. So the inductor um, L1, is that right, is it? Yeah, L1 is from here to here. So uh, these are one microfarad caps going to ground, and then this is the audio output coupling cap. So um, almost ready to do a power up test. Um, Got to fix some wiring for the uh, line voltage. I think I'll add a a three a, a grounded AC cord to this thing because uh, you know these days. It's good to have the chassis grounded for safety's sake. And um, also want to add a fuse to this thing too. It's good to have a fuse with these radios just in case.